Hi, Liz. Welcome to the podcast. I am so excited to have you here with me today. Thank you so much for inviting me. Always, always a privilege and a pleasure. I absolutely love when I get to sit down and talk with someone who came from the same area that I did in the country. We're both from Pennsylvania. We were just talking about that originally, and we have gone kind of in different directions. But I think that's the beauty of business is that we can be throughout the world and really still connect and still have something common to talk about as we think about business and building businesses. And that is kind of why you're here today is we can talk about really thinking about a key term that I haven't used very often in the podcast, which is abundance. I know this is your superpower um, and I can't wait to hear a little bit about what abundance means, because like I said, we haven't talked about it on the podcast much, and I would love to frame up what abundance actually is before we get any deeper. How does that sound? Yeah, well, that's a, first of all, a really great question. I grew up on a farm in Pennsylvania and we were very resource rich, but very money poor. And it was a bit of a, like a disconnect for me, like, how could you have 200 fresh tomatoes to eat? You know, now I can't get a fresh tomato anywhere I go. Like, where's these fresh tomatoes? You know, they're all terrible. Um, but then it was like, you know, you'd have 200 tomatoes and then you'd have, be trying to can it all and do everything. But money was poor. So what what abundance is right off the bat, I will say, is an interpretation for which is different for everyone. And this is where... What I say is what I do is I coach new entrepreneurs to get unstuck because many of us feel so stuck so that you can launch and grow an abundant business. Now, I could use words like profitable or, you know, any of the other mm -hmm. buzzwordsy things, but I like abundance because it's really when I talk to people, people are starting businesses for a lot of different ideas. They want money freedom. That's kind of the obvious one, but they also want time freedom. They also want freedom to be able to create their own ideas and see it show up in the world. Mm -hmm. it, it really means different things for different people. But for the most part, I think we all agree that abundance is a way of being that allows you to feel fulfilled and excited about your work and, of course, create the results that you want. Okay, so a few things I heard in there is that it kind of is different for everyone. And I would add location independence is one of those things that I think people are, especially now post COVID still really wanting that location independence to explore more and do more out versus having to be stuck to one spot. Um, but abundance is different for everyone. And I love that that we're not tied into a single definition right? We don't have to just say it's this one, one specific set of words. That's what it means. Right. Um, so when you're thinking about abundance and you're thinking about working with new entrepreneurs who are kind of figuring out what their offers are, figuring out who they're serving, what they're doing, even just getting the nuts and bolts, the basics of business in place, abundance might not really be on their mind yet because it feels like it's so far in the future, but how can they think about it now? Day one. Yeah. Well, that leads us directly into my three keys to an abundant business, okay. which we're going to dive into anyway. So yeah. I'll throw in there, which is that when there's a lot of misconceptions about what it means to be an entrepreneur, especially for the people that are coming from an employee background. So Ooh, that nine yeah, to five yeah, mentality, that nine, you know, it, we talk about time freedom. Well, when you have a, when you have a job, you say, Oh, I don't, I don't want somebody telling me what to do all day. I want to be an entrepreneur so I can decide what to do all day. Ooh. And then you get a whole free day and you're like, what do I do today? You know, so we have this time freedom, we have this abundance of time, but then all of a sudden it feels way too big. Mm -hmm. So we, there's certain mindsets, uh, shifts that we need to make as we, as we start out. And mm -hmm. that's, for example, one of them. But some of the other mindset shifts are this idea that uh, in order to be successful in business, you have to have one of three things, according to the, you know, the, the world, the culture. Uh -huh. You have to work really, really hard. Oh, you have to hustle. 
Oh, hustle. You have to be scrappy. You have to hustle. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. You, you have to um, have good connections. You have to know the right people. Right. Um, and then you have to be good at, at managing that time. You have to be, have like good time mm-hmm. management. Okay. So there's all these planners and, and just methods, right? I mean, one of the most confusing things for people starting a business is what's the right method for me. And what, you know, uh, some people say time blocking. Some people say no task listing. Some people say deadline focused, right? So there's these different ways Mm -hmm. and different entrepreneurs have different styles of working. That is one thing that is for sure. So Mm -hmm understanding that. So it feels hard sometimes to fit our world into this. Well, what if I don't want to work hard? Like maybe I'm quitting my job because I don't want to work so hard. Or maybe I'm an introvert and I don't know very many people or I don't, I feel uncomfortable going to a networking Mm -hmm. event. Or maybe I just, I'm, you know, feel like I don't know how to stop procrastinating or any one of those things. So what I have noticed about those uh, those culturally accepted norms of ways that you should be being in your business is that they're all things that are somewhat outside of you, right? What if I go to a networking event and I don't meet the right person? What if I'm not good at time management or I can't figure that out? What if I'm tired and I want to just go to bed and I don't want to work anymore? Whatever it is. So the three keys to an abundant business are as follows. The first Mm -hmm. key is to ask powerfully. Ooh. The second one is to give wholeheartedly. And the third one is to receive graciously. So I just want to start by saying, I already feel better, right? I don't, I don't feel like I have to hustle. I don't feel like I have to, you know, figure it all out, deal with everything, get to, right? It's, this is all three of those three things are all within the realm of my control. Okay. So I'll pause for a minute and see if Eva. Oh man. So everything, you're absolutely right. Everything that we tell ourselves about what being an entrepreneur requires and is, is external. And simply shifting those expectations and allowing a little bit of a change and really looking inwardly about what this really means to be an entrepreneur totally wipes out the challenge some of the big challenges of well I don't know the right people or I don't know that I want to hustle I'm tired I'm coming out of a 60 70 80 hour a week work job work or job I don't want to do that again. That's not why I signed up to be an entrepreneur. Right. So when the moment that you said to ask powerfully, give wholeheartedly and receive graciously, that feels so much lighter. It does. It feels so much lighter. Now we could dive into the individual thing. So what, what do I mean yeah. ask powerfully and why is that the first key? Yeah. Talk to me so, about that. Yeah. Asking powerfully is about really two things. Vision. What do I want? What do I want? You mentioned location independence. Uh, Oops, forgot about that. You know, a lot of people do do want that. In fact, one of my most latest clients starting her business is it's exactly I was like, I forgot that. (laughs) So asking powerfully is knowing what you want. But this the powerfully part, of course, you know, it's a it has to roll off the tongue. So I'm added those words, the adverbs, adverbs. Oh, are sure, there? let's go with that. I think it's adverbs because it's so. a verb. Yeah, okay. I think so too. Anyway, um, when I say powerfully, what I mean is to be specific. Okay. So everyone can ask. Now, there's a lot of emotion that comes with asking, asking for help, asking for money, asking for just any anything. So. It's not as quite as simple as saying, let me ask, but it is the most straightforward way. So for instance, okay. if you if you know somebody that has a connection that you want to make, ask that person, can you make an introduction? Can you give me an introduction to so-and-so person? Or everyone's favorite uh, when you're on the sales call, 
are you ready to purchase my program? Yes. It costs X, Y, Z. No, because we don't do that. We go, well, what do you think? What do you think? Are right. you interested? How does that fit? Right? Because we're afraid to ask. Mm-hmm. So asking and asking specifically will just, it's just easier. It's just easier that you started. Okay. So I, I know that some listeners are thinking, Okay, but it's not easy to ask for this for the credit card or ask for the friend to connect you with their connection because then you worry and all of these gremlins pop up, right? It's the what ifs. What mm-hmm. if I don't represent my friend well and that connection isn't great and I mess it up somehow? I see this all the time with new entrepreneurs who are trying to figure things out and there's a lot of that self-doubt. So how, what ideas do you have for moving through the gremlins or the self-doubt, whatever it pops up so that you can ask powerfully and actually get moving forward, get unstuck? The number one thing you can do is practice. The number one thing you can do is practice and you can practice in small ways. I had a client once who came on the call. We, we were talking about this, like, go, go ask, you know, go. He, so he said, um, so I went to a restaurant and I, I asked the person at the table next to me, may I have the salt? I mean, that's a pretty low risk, right? But oh, also yeah. something you probably wouldn't do. You probably mm-hmm. wouldn't ask your neighbor for this. Do you mind if I have the salt? Yeah. But I'm not asking for money. I'm not doing any of that. I had a woman that was a client of mine. And she, this is I, I, to this day, I just love her. She would go in a grocery store. And buy mm-hmm. groceries, you know, get groceries. And when she was at the uh, cashier, you know how they'll have like little things at the oh, cashier yeah. that you can, candy bars and things like that. And the magazines and all the little stuff yeah. that's just there. Yeah. So she would say, hey, can, can I have, can I just have this? And you can't <gasps> believe how often they would just say, sure. Wow. I mean, the things you can ask for, this is the thing that's so amazing about asking. Mm-hmm. I have asked people to move their seat on the airplane. I've asked them to, you know, give me money. I've mm-hmm. asked them to give me rides. I got a free guitar recently. Like there are so many things that I just said, let, let me ask. <laughs> so I've now gotten so good at it that I, I do it. I guess I would say without embarrassment. Okay. But I had to go through all this all the conversations of like what they're going to think about me and all this Mm -hmm. is so many reasons. I'm just like, you know what? They can always say no. Like I'm going to put the responsibility on that person to say no. And that's the key is that when you don't ask, you are making a decision for another person. Right. And you know how much you hate when people make decisions for you. So why would you do that for someone else? That's very true. And just flipping it and remembering that you're giving people the opportunity to make their own choice and assuming and empowering them to have control over their own life. And ultimately we love control, right? We yeah. love having control. So yeah. give them back their control. Don't don't assume that you have the right to take it or to have it in the first place. Uh, the, just a really quick story about the airplane seat thing. So I was, fr- I was actually flying on an um, international flight with my niece. Okay. And I always book the aisle and the window. And if I'm traveling with somebody, because if you leave the middle, they book those seats last. Yep. But everybody wants the aisle seat or the middle seat. So I was hoping when I got onto the flight that there would be nobody in between. And there was somebody. So it's like a whole other thing. I was like, oh, of course, there's somebody. So there was an, a row behind me. And there was an empty middle seat. And I, I don't know, I just, I just asked him, I said, would you be willing to move to that middle seat behind me in the other row behind me? So he did, he did. And then I started to feel a little guilty. Like probably people listening would be like, oh my God, you know, like now you made three people uncomfortable instead of you. And so I sort of was like this in my seat. Oh, you just kind of scrunched down. Like we've all done that. Right. And I was like, well, maybe that's a little too bold of an ask. So then a little bit later, I guess I had to go to the bathroom or something. So I get up and I was like, you know, looking, they had totally rearranged themselves. The middle seat guy now had an aisle seat because he, the aisle seat guy just moved across to the aisle across the way. So everybody got better seats. 
because of it. Camille because and I you, have- you made that hard ask that you I- felt like was too bold and it wasn't. It made everyone's life better on that international flight. Exactly. We were all had either an aisle or a middle seat now. We were all so oh. happy. And I was like, of, of course, because I made the ask. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's not a, that's not a sale. Well, this is a sale really. I mean, I had to. I you did. Continue. You had to sell him on moving out of the seat he was already yeah. occupying and going somewhere else. It was a sale. Yeah. So practice, practice, practice. And Do I you- find, yes. And I find practicing with someone who, you know, knows what's happening, even role-playing it and saying, Hey, can I practice what I'd actually say when I get to this part of the conversation and practicing those words that the more you actually put the words out of your mouth, the more easily they come in the moment when you're nervous. Yeah. Yeah. So just finding someone to practice with, even if it's not a real setting, just role-playing and allowing that to happen. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the ask powerfully part. What about the give wholeheartedly? That one really strikes a chord with me. Yeah. So the give wholeheartedly, because people, when, when, if I'm doing this, let's say in a workshop or something, I'll say, mm-hmm. okay, the first step is ask powerfully. What's the second step? And everybody's like, receive it. And I say, mm, there's a step in between, which is the give wholeheartedly, oh. which is counterintuitive to what you think, because you think, oh, now I'm, I'm going to start receiving mm-hmm. what you're doing when, again, the wholeheartedly part being with generosity is what I would say. Okay. So in other words, if you want clients and you're feeling stuck about getting Mm -hmm. clients, because I know this is what we all want is more clients. When you're, if you're feeling stuck about getting clients for whatever reason, you might call up somebody and say, uh, how can I help you get clients? How can I, who's your referral person? Or if you ever go to these networking events, mm-hmm. where they say, you know, who's the best referral person and you go on them and you think, okay, who, who do I know anybody who's an accountant that I can refer to this person? And so the giving wholeheartedly is what you're doing is you're creating more of what you want in the universe by giving more of it. So you're, you're creating more clients by helping this person get a client. Mm-hmm. And of, co- of course, there's the reciprocal thing. There is oh, the yeah. law of re- reciprocity where then later they're going to think of you. And that's beautiful. And that is definitely a bonus. But we're talking in, a, in the realm of abundance here, which is there are plenty of clients for everyone. Yes. And that's part of the mindset that mm-hmm. you don't usually have when you're a new entrepreneur. You say, oh my God, I can't find any, which is a scarcity mindset. But if I, if I have an abundance mindset, then I say, there's plenty of clients for everyone, including me. Mm -hmm. I always include myself in those statements. There's plenty of money for everyone, including me. There's plenty of clients for everyone, including me. And I'm contributing to that because I'm creating more myself. Even Yeah. I really like that, that you pointed out. I always include myself in that. A lot of times I think we stop at that. There's plenty of clients for everyone. There's plenty of clients. There's, there's more than enough money to go around, but we don't ever physically say, and me like that. That's me too. I'm part of this. I'm part of that. Exactly. I always like to say there's plenty of parking spaces in New York city. It's just that there, I mean, there, there are literally thousands of parking spaces in New York city. It's just that there people are in them. So, right. (laughs) So when I'm looking for a parking place, I go, well, there's plenty of parking in New York City and and for everyone, including me. And then then I find a parking space. Then the magical person backs out and you're thinking, yes, yes, you drive up. It happened to me the other night. I came home at 1030 and I was like, oh, I mean, we have a backup plan if we don't have a spot. But I was like, oh, look at that. There's the spot. Yep. Now I don't have to move it in the morning. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to know when I think about giving wholeheartedly and you're talking about, you know, how can you connect other people? How can you help other people out? And a lot of times it does come back to us. We're going to put that aside for now. How do you make sure you don't stay stuck in just giving wholeheartedly and never making an ask or moving into receiving graciously? I know we haven't gotten there yet, but how do you not just get stuck in giving wholeheartedly? I know a lot of entrepreneurs have a massive heart and they want to do good. They want to give back in their community and in society. And it's a comfortable place, right? It feels good. Mm. Yeah, it certainly does. Most of the time, giving can yeah. sometimes 
not feel good either. So there's there's that as well. Uh, because you have to remember that that there's it's a three part program. And if you only stick with one part of it, that's like saying, you know, hydrating, exercising and eating well. But if I only just exercise and I don't eat well, you know, or if I only just hydrate, I listen, I can drink a lot of water all day. Right. That can make me a you know healthy athletic person. No, probably not. Despite what all the YouTube ads say. I know. Watch their videos. So uh, it's part of, you got to be thinking of it as part of a whole. It's okay. not isolated. But I also want to say that, and we didn't really get to this part yet, but you can start anywhere. So in other words, okay. you can start with asking, but you can also start with giving. If you're feeling like, well, I don't really have anyone to ask. Okay, how can I give? And that doesn't just have to be giving like clients and things like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just spent the last couple of weeks in my basement. My daughter's home from college, so she's helping me. And I was like, why do I still have, and my kids are older now, why do I still have, you know, Legos in my base? Like, and just people yep. are so happy to get them. Mm-hmm. And it just feels so good to let go. So you could, you could purge all kinds of things. It could be, you know, what you're willing to, beliefs you're willing to let go. It could be, okay. um, physical items you're willing to let go it could be i don't know how many of you have like a a thousand emails in your inbox oh just letting you know you're never gonna go back and you're never 2019 is too long ago and you are not gonna answer that email or respond or or watch the video i go back and i looked at a whole bunch of them i was like oh a video i wanted to watch it wasn't even it didn't even exist anymore like delete delete so (laughs) Uh, that that's a really helpful tip to it's not just about giving in that one sense but i have to laugh i before we got on to talk today i was gathering up all the clothes that my kiddo doesn't fit into anymore i have all the bags lined up by the door to take to donate them later today because someone else is going to get great use out of them they're in great condition and it feels good and it's something that i can give and do um, so it just made me think about that. You packing everything up and I was kind of doing the same thing, um, to and give, to give. Because if you kept every piece of clothing that your child ever wore since they were, you know, zero years old, you wouldn't have no room anymore. So we don't think of it that way. We think like, oh, if I hold on, if I hold on, I hold on, I'll get back mm-hmm. to it. I'll get back to it. We have to remember all of this stuff is taking up mental energy in our entrepreneurial lives. So what we want to be doing is creating a flow and at, you know, asking and receiving, giving, that's part of the flow. We're doing, that's what we're looking for. And it's not like about being woo woo and maybe you're a woo 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 person. Maybe you're not, I I don't care. It is a flow because there is more room in my basement now because I gave away all those Legos. I could tell you that much. Um, Okay, so we've been talking a lot about this and it's a flow. So let's talk about what it means, means to receive graciously. What do you think? What are you um, thinking yeah. of there? Yeah, well, I think this is the funny part because everybody's like, oh, yeah, man, I, I'm ready. I, I'll just give it to me. I'll receive. Yeah, yeah. The fact is, is that we're actually not very good at receiving. And I can do a quick little litmus test to let you know when it's easy to receive and when it's not. Just let somebody do one of two things offer you a compliment or offer you money. For things like gas or something, you know, if you give them a ride and they offer or or to help you, someone offers to help you with something, Mm -hmm. just notice how well you receive that. Most people, if you're somewhat unconscious about this, don't receive it well. I have a personal policy. If someone offers me money, I say yes. Why would I say, why would I say no Mm -hmm. to that? I want money. I want more money. I want money to flow into me. Now I'm not talking about like if I take my friend out for a birthday and right, walks, but, right. That's a whole different, whole yeah. different ball game there. Yeah, I'm talking about people who uh, who want to give me things. I yeah. want money, etc. So it's not, and it's not only about money. So what I want you to know, I'm going to say this like a fact: okay. we receive conditionally. When it's coming towards us, we go, "Mm, do I like that? Do I like that client? Do I not like that client? We receive very conditionally. Mm -hmm. And 
that's your prerogative. If you want to receive conditionally, that's fine. I'm just letting you know it's harder for things to get to you, for abundance to get to you, because you're blocking it. You're literally mm -hmm. saying you're blocking it. And I prefer to take the approach of the, the receiving and then I can, because I'm good at the letting go as well, you know what, I may not hold on to that thing or I may uh, may receive a client that is not so great to work with, but I'll do my best with them until, I'm not saying do things that hurt your business. I'm saying, right. I'm saying you know, that's okay and I can always let that person, like you always have that choice to let it go as well. Yeah. So you don't have to block that receiving energy. And I'm you've probably heard the statistic. People that win the lottery, most of them are bankrupt. Yep. No matter and except for the super big winners who just can't possibly run out of money. But even they don't receive money that graciously because you, you read about them, there's all kinds of stuff that yeah. comes up, you know. Yeah. So okay. it's it's about being open to receiving and and graciously means thank you i'm great having gratitude and starting with gratitude so i feel like when you kind of come up with a framework like this that just really blends beautifully and truly is going to lift you up as an entrepreneur something happened that really for you made all of this click i'm wondering is that the case here did something just really happen that made you finally see all of this a little bit differently? Yeah. So what happened was I volunteered at my son's elementary school, you know, and that's what you do when your kids are little, you do. you volunteer. And I, even though I had a past of having financial, like I grew up poor, as you mm -hmm. would say. And I mean, I, I was an adult at this point. So I was married. I mean, I had financial, I was financially solvent, I would say. Okay. And, and, what happened was I was volunteering and somehow I ended up as the VP of fundraising. And I did that mostly because I was good at events. I was really good at bringing people together and all that. But I also discovered, not really to my surprise, but like to, in a, oh, that I was really good at raising money. I was really good at asking for money. I, I found that I was rather detached from it. And I... I just thought, well, it's a charity, right? And it wasn't for me. It was for the school. That's what made it easier. It was for my child. So yeah, I, of course I was going to ask people. Mm -hmm. Of course I was going to ask them to donate to the auction or mm -hmm. give me $100 or whatever mm -hmm. it was. And I gained some skills because again, it wasn't me personally. I gained some skills in asking for money. Okay. And I was able to apply that and see... You know, it's funny, you know, schools, they're not particularly well-funded usually. So mm -hmm. you can see the real impact of, mm -hmm. well, if I ask and we raise $10,000. That's a big deal. We can have a music teacher or we can have a yeah. something else. And then I had the opportunity to do a talk about abundance. Mm -hmm. I, the, the backstory doesn't really matter. And I said, all right, now I need to formulate this into a, into what what is it that's happening? And that's when I really sat down and figured out, oh, there are these three parts to it. Mm -hmm. Because without the three parts, it does it it does it stops. I can't just ask. I have to receive right. as well. If I ask and don't receive, that doesn't work. The, then the ask has stopped and, and you've got someone who has said yes to you and you've said, nope, sorry. Yeah. I know I just asked, but no. <laughs> we do that. It's crazy. We do it all the time. All the time. I guarantee you that there are people in, I'm speaking to the audience now, yeah. in your business who want to work with you and you haven't said yes to them because you haven't followed up with them. I sound like I'm lecturing. I'm sorry. Uh, you, they want you. You've got to follow up. <laughs> I've, I've had people, yeah, I talked to her. She said she wanted to do my course. Okay. Did you take her money? No, I didn't. Okay. Go call her oh, back. Go, 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 call her back. go, go back. Go try get again. Her, get her money. <laughs> and there, people want, it's like this way in which we, we don't receive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's how it came yeah. about. And I just feel, I, I like it because it's something 
tangible I can do. I can always stop in my business and say, well, where could I ask? Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing. And the second thing is, as we talked about earlier, it just gives you a sense of, of more of a fulfillment of, of abundance rather than like hard scrabble, you know, scrappy life. Yeah. And that is honestly not why most of us got into being an entrepreneur. We don't want to have to be scrappy and hustle all the time. It's fine to have seasons, but not, it it can't be the norm. For most of us, we don't want that to be the norm. It's not sustainable. No, no. Not sustainable. I mean, if you don't want anything else in your life, it is potentially sustainable. But if you want to have friends or family or even just some personal time to sit and do nothing. Go to music festivals. Like or I'm go to music festivals. Yeah. For a week. <laughs> no talking to anybody. I'm doing yeah. any Zoom calls for an entire week. It's going to be glorious. <laughs> You're going to love it. <laughs> okay. So Liz, thank you so much for sharing this framework. It is something that I have not really seen a whole lot of. And I know that our listeners are going to gain so much from the wisdom you just shared with asking powerfully, giving wholeheartedly and receiving graciously and knowing that it all works together as a whole. We can't just take one piece of it and expect everything to work out. Okay. You do have to do that whole kind of process together. Um, And I know that there are going to be some more questions and, and things that are going to pop up and people are going to want to reach out to you and get more of your knowledge and insights. So how can they do that? Yes. Well, I certainly hope that you do. For those of you listening, I Mm -hmm. hope that you do. Something I recently created was, is a quiz. And for new Mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, it's particularly helpful because it's entitled, are you wired for business success? And Mm -hmm. it is a quiz that's going to tell you about your CEO personality of your, of your leadership type. Mm -hmm. And it goes directly back to what we were talking about earlier, which is, let's say you're an introvert you know, maybe you're more shy about asking, or maybe you are what would be more on like what I would call the controlling end where I can do it all by myself. I don't have to ask for help. Like, you know, I'm going to be self-made, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So when you take the quiz, it tells you what your CEO leadership personality is, what your CEO type is. And then of course, you're going to get some information that's going to help you with understanding Obviously, it's a little bit of a clickbaity. Well, are you wired for business success? Of course, I believe we are all wired for business yes. success. So that's a little bit of a spoiler. You are, but it's helpful to really understand your style so that you can see where where mm-hmm. it works for you, but where it doesn't work for you and how you can incorporate it. I can see that really boosting your self-awareness, especially if you're coming out of a nine to five where you haven't necessarily had to have a CEO mindset and approach to your work. And now suddenly you do because you're the one in charge of everything that happens in your business and just really getting in touch with what, what your style is. I think that's going to be really helpful um, to be able to move forward and lean into those strengths and say, oh, I maybe want to make some tweaks here and ask for some help asking, right? Yeah. And then receive that help so that you can keep moving forward and be in that place of abundance while you grow your business and, and see it thrive, really see it thrive. Um, yes. So I will put the link to the quiz in our show notes. So yeah. no one has to worry about writing Remember, it down. Yeah. I just will say one thing. My website is lizwolfcoaching.com, but that's wolf with an E. e. But just to go back to what we were saying earlier is I did grow up on a farm when mm-hmm. I, when I, uh, you know, my mother bought this farm and we were sheep farmers. So, you know, obviously with the last name of wolf, our, we, <laughs> oh, we had a, we had a little slogan, wolf's the name, sheep's the game. Wow. Yeah, we had t-shirts printed up with that way back in the 70s, 70s and 80s. So uh, that's a good way to remember LizWolfCoaching.com, but it's wolf with an E. And okay. um, with, yeah, I'm sure the links will be in the show. Oh, now. yes, absolutely. Because I definitely want people to connect with you. You've got such a great positive energy and um, the experience to back all of that up. And I know that you have you have what people need. So let's get, let, let's get your name out there even more so that we can all live in abundance and work in abundance. Um, so thank you, Liz. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today. Yeah. You're so welcome. And thank you everybody for listening. Really appreciate it. Thank you.